Thanks once again for coming to a, a special meeting. Uh, this one will be dealing with structures and government. We have two main presentations this evening. Uh, before we do that, though, we'll have a um, approval of the minutes from the, uh, September 22nd. So moved, second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. Any comments or discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, the minutes stand approved. Uh, we will get right into our discussion um, of government structures. First of all, I'd like to make a uh, correction. On the uh, um, second amended agenda, um, the resolution 240, it should be 24008-09 because that was from our past council uh, session. This was um, given to us in March, so that's from a different council. So if you just change that 09 to 010 to 08 to 09. <clears throat> okay, um, Alderman Winfleisch was the um, chairperson of the committee on uh, committee for special co uh, forms of government or forms of government. He will give an overview to the group here. Uh, we'll have questions from the um, council, but also questions from the public as to uh, our statements or comments about it. So this is the one where we were talking about city administrator and city manager government. Thank you, Madam Chair. There you go. Is this on then? Yes, yes it is. Okay. Good evening. Um, if you recall, at the end of the last um, uh, council session, uh, towards the last few weeks of it, uh, a, uh, go the Government Structure Committee was um, created for the point of two things, really, and that would be looking at a city administrator form of government as well as um, looking at uh, corporate counsel. Uh, do we stick with a, uh, 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 an elected city attorney or do we go with some other method that way? Unfortunately, as our overview showed, we only had five weeks uh, to tackle both of those questions. Um, the committee agreed that we would start focusing on the city administrator position first and then, uh, if time permitting, look at the, um, the, the city attorney position. Uh, and unfortunately, though, with five weeks, we did not have time. The hope was that the committee would be reactivated uh, by the new council, this council, uh, to further discussion on those points that we have not uh, accomplished at this point in time. Um, furthermore, uh, if you, in your reports, the appendix brings a lot of information that was out of the purview of what we're looking at in terms of city administrator, but a lot of the information ties in directly to if we're going to change the form of government from the top down, um, the bottom forms of the structures, uh, the ward, representation versus a citywide representation and so on, like the school district would have, uh, would tie into that as well. So that's important information there. Um, that report information came from the white papers uh, from the Greater Sheboygan Committee uh, and was voted unanimously by the committee to add to it, uh, but it, it was not as, uh, discussed as much as the administrator position would have been. So really the focus today is going to be on uh, professional city uh, administration, administrator position. Um, but I'll be open to any and all questions regarding the entire report uh, that the council has. Uh, I do believe that the report is online for those of the public that would like to uh, look at the full report. Uh, I think there might be copies out there already uh, as well uh, to take a look at. Um, skipping the resolution uh, that's uh, attached to it for now, uh, on this first and second paragraphs, we really kind of highlight the reason f what, uh, what was created and why. Um, Again, back in February 11, 2009, we only met five times. That was every week uh, that we had the opportunity to. We were giving a drop dead date that we had to respond back to the council by, uh, which we did meet that date. Um, but again, there's a lot of factors, a lot of nuances of city government that need to be discussed, um, not just within the, the city attorney position, which we didn't cover, but within the city administrator position. Really what we're coming out with was a recommendation that we move towards that direction. Um, but as you'll see, that does not necessarily dictate the actual form of what we recommend. Uh, that'll make some sense as I move forward in, uh, in their findings. Um, there's really two forms of city administration, the city administrator uh, and the city manager. While the names sound awful familiar, uh, people tend to use them interchangeably. In fact, in Wisconsin, they're not interchangeable. They are two completely separate forms uh, that we can examine. The first one is the mayor slash city administrator form of governance. 
uh, that we discussed. And that would involve uh, having a mayor uh, position, having city mayor administrator position, as well as having the elected council as well. The addition, as people would see, would actually be the city administrator uh, as is, um, as added to within some kind of table of organization. Uh, it is the fastest growing model of municipal governance that people are, cities are changing over to that for uh, many good reasons. Um, but it involves the installation of a professionally trained manager to assume the responsibilities for the day-to-day -day operations and serve as a fixed point of accountability for service delivery. Uh, what that means is that, that it's the chief executive position. It would be the executive director, chairman of the board, it would be CEO, something of that nature where the buck stops here. There's one place that, that it would be going to. Furthermore, then, for the uh, for public's viewpoint is there is one per person that is the ultimate decision maker as well, uh, that uh, if contacting with the city governments, you get to a certain point, you like the answer, you can keep moving up, you eventually know where that, that, that ends. Um, but the responsibilities, the day-to-day -day operations, the responsibilities are actually dictated by the elected officials still. On one hand, the mayor is in charge of the policy, um, responsive to the public. Uh, when there's the public uh, dictates a change of policy, uh, doesn't like the way things are being operated, uh, the most powerful option they have is the vote. Uh, and so in terms of policy, do we raise taxes? Do we lower taxes? Do we do redevelopment projects? Do we hold the line on redevelopment projects? That is still ultimately a decision of the public through their elected officials, through the mayor, who's in charge of policy. Uh, the greatest um, uh, responsibility of a city administrator is to not be involved in creation of policy. Their position is to recommend policies, is to um, give input on reasons why policies may be good or may be bad, uh, may give information on the experience in, in other localities following the same policy, but it actually is not in charge of dictating that policy. Um, the, it is the council who then sets the roles, and that would actually go through um, salary agreements, uh, who would go through that process of dictating who we want, and what rec recommendations we need, what requirements we need for that position, what the salary is, and go through the hiring process uh, through civil service. Um, so we're very much in charge of what that person would do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but they're, they're, that position would be responsible to the committee for the council for the activities of the day-to-day, -day, but not for policy. And that's, that's the two things. People ask, why do we have a mayor and a city administrator? It's because those two things need to be separate. Public needs to be heard, and that is through the elected voice of the mayor and through the common council. Um, Dan Thompson was the person that we had spoken with. Uh, he gave it a lot of information. He is with the League of Wisconsin League of Municipalities uh, and was able to give us good information on which cities have which forms of government, and they were briefly listed in, in, the, in the report. Um, 24 cities. Uh, I think that's actually be 24 major cities, larger cities, with a full-time mayor and no administrator, much like we have here. Uh, nine cities with a city manager and no mayor, which we'll talk about later. And four cities with a full-time mayor and full-time administrator. And then 24 other cities with a full-time administrator, part-time mayor. And these are cities like Wauwatosa, Franklin, Oak Creek, West Bend. These are the nearby uh, positions that would have a uh, part-time mayor and a full-time administrator. As I said, the creation of that is actually by local ordinance and, dict and the, the responsibilities are given by um, the, the elected officials here for that person. Um, and that's an important point that I don't want to gloss over too much is that it's the, the position is created somehow within the um, responsibilities of the elected officials uh, to create this position or not to create the position, to dictate um, how long we hire a person for uh, or uh, responsibilities of that, that's up to us. Um, what we recommend for the res uh, responsibilities of a city administrator and how to judge the performance of a city administrator is on uh, the success in uh, the, the bullet points below, directing, supervising, and coordinating the day-to-day -day activities of all municipal governments and services, uh, the preparation of the annual budget for submission to the mayor and to the council, the um, the mayor would still be responsible ultimately for the uh, presentation as our city code state for the, the budget. But the city administrator would act in concert with the mayor to write that budget. Uh, implementation of all actions of the council and carrying out its directives. Uh, as the council changes policies or creates new policies, it is the responsibility of that professional uh, to then go ahead and know the best way to, to make those changes within city government. Review and, uh, and 
should we again make recommendations on policy issues for consideration by the council. And this would come from the experience of the person uh, or the, um, um, the groups that the, the, the city administrator would be associated with. Uh, what's working in other cities? Would it work here? Uh, are there new ideas that we haven't even heard about that be, being successful elsewhere? That person as a professional will know that and be responsible to communicate those ideas to us uh, as well. Uh, we're responsible for providing regular updates to the council on community on matters of interest. Uh, again, if that person hears things that as elected officials were not, communication must come forward to, to the mayor and to the common council. And they're responsible for doing so, not keeping that secret. Uh, it is, you know, it, we, ultimately we are that, that position's supervisor. And providing complete and factual information about local operations, including pros and cons of alternatives and the long range consequences of decisions. Uh, as we've probably all experienced at times in the heat of debate, sometimes we make decisions that we look back later on and go, was that truly the best one or was it truly not the best one? Uh, having a professional who has had experience elsewhere, who's had the education elsewhere, and who knows other city administrators elsewhere would be able to say, this is a good idea, I know where you're going with that, however, be careful because this may occur. We currently have that in the legal aspect with our city attorney, but there may be policy aspects that we're not aware of that we'd have to follow through with. Um, you know, state laws that we're not aware of or, or so on. Um, we talked a little bit about how the mayor of the role uh, is in the community that has an administrator, and I'll skip this portion and I'll allow people to ask questions later on about the, that, that role if anybody does. But there is the, the appendix there that uh, the city attorney, Steve McLean, highlighted what's actually in the city code, what is this, uh, the role of the mayor. If we would ever go to a oh, former government that does not include a mayor, we'd actually have to change our city code uh, to change those opportunities, uh, which is not the recommendation of the, uh, the committee, uh, the government structure committee. Our recommendation is to keep a, a form of mayor. Uh, and so those duties that are spelled out in, in Attorney McLean's appendix would still need to be functioned by the mayor. Um, but ultimately, um, as I've stated already, but the, the qualifications, the salary, that's up to sovereign grievances, which is up subject to the council uh, and subject to mayoral, mayoral veto, quite frankly. So there's a lot of layers there that, that the position created is responsive to the desires of elected officials who should be responsible to the desires of those that elect them, the uh, uh, people of, uh, in the city of Sheboygan. Um, but there's a wide variety of wages. There's a wide variety of requirements that we could ask for. Uh, as stated in the report there, the, the Wisconsin tax, um, Taxpayer Alliance report a salary range of 44,500 44, to 110,000 for city administrator positions. Um, my experience uh, in, in attending classes yeah, yeah, to take my master's degree in public administration, uh, for a city our size, would probably be looking at the 45 to 65,000. But if you wanted somebody with, who had 10 years of experience, who's been in cities of this size, who has you know, that qualifications, be prepared to spend on the high end of that. Uh, but again, we'll talk about, or I'll answer questions regarding, does that pay for itself or does not pay for itself? And the recommendation of the committee is, uh, by making structural changes in, the form of, in our current form of government, we can save that money, and it would probably be a very short-term return on investment uh, to when, if the right person is hired uh, in terms of finding the savings and in terms of paying basically for their own way. Um, Tenure of office is a local option. You know, we, instead, of we could create a position for five years, we could create a position for three. Um, but... Um, uh, currently, the city, the city of Sheboygan Department has our appointed for five-year terms, and so we'd recommend the same pattern as well. Uh, and in most communities, the administrator is an at-will employee serving at the pleasure of the council. And that's the important thing there, that if we have someone that does not necessarily meet our perception of what a city administrator should be doing or is not meeting our guidelines as an at-will employee, it's, it's um, uh, instead of a contract employee, something that we can terminate at that point in time. Uh, and on that, I'll definitely defer uh, in terms of the employment law to a city attorney if um, uh, any questions about that. But um, that's our experience is, is the cities that come across that. You're free to move on and free to appoint somebody else. The second form of, of uh, local governance that we studied was the city manager versus the city administrator. City manager form of local government. Uh, this is different uh, than a city administrator in the sense that this is actually um, in the Wisconsin state statutes of what the responsibilities are uh, and um, how they're going about appointed. Uh, it really takes away a lot of the control of the elected officials in, 
in the locality in Sheboygan um, to dictate how this person um, uh, it should act in their day-to-day -day op operations, what duties they should follow. Um, and in fact, then the state codes, state statutes show that it's that city manager becomes the one and only chief executive officer. Uh, there is no mayor, um, and as a chief executive officer, um, it's a position that's not responsive to an elected body, uh, as well. So our recommendation is not to go with the city manager position, and there's other points there as well. But um, we still feel that we need a position if we're going to have someone who's being a chief executive. Someone still needs to be responsive to the elected pe uh, people of the city. Um, on the third page, I'm going to basically skip on down to the very specific recommendations of the Government Structure Committee, uh, and that is to, um, to not recommend the city manager, uh, but rather to, to uh, recommend a city administrator position, one that uh, can be created by the, the government uh, as is, uh, specifically for these uh, very specific duties, uh, duties that we feel that um, the... Um, um, city administrators should follow through. And as preparation of the annual budget we talked about, recruiting, hiring, supervising, terminating governmental staff, something currently within human resources, advising the council on matters of operational importance and carrying out council directives, providing complete and objective information to the council, developing an annual action plan. And this is a key one as well. Uh, the action plan, it goes both ways. Uh, one, it sits down with either a committee is set forth or the entire council sits forth every year with the city administrator position. And that is simply to say, what is the goals for the city in that particular year? And what is the goals the city has for the city administrator in that particular year? <coughs> Uh, and as such, that two-way communication then, uh, one, allows us to make sure that we have the right city administrator in position, but two, then, every department head knows what our goal, specific goals are for that year. Right now, it, it, what happens to city government is generally our budget is, becomes that action plan, which means that we run all year to create the funds that we're going to spend, but really no long-term plan on how we're going to spend them. Uh, and, and so we end up with a silo effect. Each department is independent. They get their portion of the budget. They operate within that portion of budget. But there's no long-term document or even annual document that, that breaks the silos down into this unified city government so that the council can see how are things proceeding uh, throughout. So, so it's one way of, of, of once the budget's passed and every department looks at their budget uh, and says, okay, this is what we got, it's, it's a broader term. Now we have their budget, but now it's how is that using for the city's goals of that year, um, which is, I think, a much higher uh, level of, of executive operational than we've been operating under since the city's been around. Um, and then, of course, the coordinating the preparation of the annual report as well. Um, the key things about that, uh, the duties are, Without being political, because this, um, the Government Structure Committee was created under a different mayor than we currently have right now, so I don't wish to speak on either one of the two mayors that are, that are um, uh, with us right now. Um, it's not political. It is a search for a, a, a more advanced professional. The person's going to have at least a master's degree uh, in the findings. Um, what we talked about it was that we don't elect the chairman of a board of a private company. Um, we don't have a popularity contest to dictate um, um, experience. We let experience dictate experience. We let experience dictate salary. Um, and we let education dictate the kind of person that we're going to have. And that's the kind of thing we're looking for is then for the, the ultimate chief executive is to have to meet certain requirements. Now that's not to take anything away in the sense of the mayor position, and that's why I don't want to speak about either um, former Mayor Perez or current Mayor Bob Ryan, uh, because it's not meant to be political. It is to be actually be a support tool for the mayor. The mayor then can focus on the policy changes. What did I get elected for? What did the public say when they elected me? Um, what did I promise, and how am I going to deliver those promises? Uh, and I think that there's no greater power than to, uh, to allow the, the elected officials to go ahead and pursue those goals and not have to all of a sudden try to become a, a master degree educated person um, in, the t in the time that they're trying to lead the city through with their policy changes. Uh, so w w the Government Structure Committee really found it as a resource for the mayors and not a replacement of the mayors, uh, but rather to, uh, to, to take away some of the responsibilities um, and give them to, uh, and, and create more responsibilities for what the mayor was elected to do, uh, and that is to make, create policy and elect policy. Um, 
so we, we felt strongly that the administrator should have broad-based training in specifically municipal management. Um, certainly within the private industry, um, there are you know, people with masters of business administrations and um, uh, highly educated, a lot of experience as well. Um, but I can tell you from experiences that from working towards my masters of public administration, uh, that while many of the same ideals of leadership, of uh, budgeting and finance are the same, uh, the actual knowledge of the laws within uh, what you have, to, what you're operating, a municipality versus a private industry. Um, negotiations uh, are, are a little bit different. Um, so we, we specifically, while you could use somebody with a private uh, master's of business administration, we recommend definitely someone with municipal management experience. Uh, furthermore, someone with municipal management experience, you can look at their history. What did they do in the past? Were they successful in the previous municipality? Uh, why are they moving forward? Um, and um, there's history there that we can use. As a city of our size, we would become a destination for somebody uh, that is uh, looking at uh, you know, either getting, moving their way up in life or you know, taking a, a larger responsibility. So I think we'll have the opportunity to be a much pickier about who we hire, and we can definitely look at the history and say, I know what you're saying, but your history doesn't show that. Uh, and so we definitely want municipal experience. But then they also can provide consistency, and that's another a word that we talked a lot about is uh, well, policies are meant to change and are meant to be responsive to the will of the people. Um, and I think, Bob, you can attest to this in your first day in the office. You sit down at the desk. It's an empty desk. There's a phone. There's a computer. And you've made all your promises to people. How do you start? Uh, and you know, it's a tough decision for us uh, as older persons as well. We have the same thing as we come in. Um, you know, I've heard comments of, wow, this is not really what I expected. Uh, well, no one ex really understands until we sit at these desks and understand what it is we're doing um, and, and follow that learning curve. Having someone that's consistently in that office, day one, the mayor can come in there and say, this is what you've, I heard you say to the people, this is what you want to do, here are the tools to go do it. From day one, that, that person can be out there. The, there is no learning curve in that aspect. Same thing for the, for the ultimate. There's going to be a resource for us as we sit down um, to, to, uh, to use to further advance our policies as we were elected to do. Develop strategic planning models, and that's, that's something as well. Uh, again, we talked about the annual report, but this is more of the long term. Um, right now, uh, we're undergoing a change within the capital improvements program, and that's one example of changing the strategic program uh, for how the city's operated in the past, but how we're going to do it in the future as well. City administrator will definitely have uh, ideas and experience in making those changes as well. Um, and the long-term leadership. And again, the leadership isn't necessarily to be, um, this is their city, it is not. It is the, the elected official city. Uh, they report to us as well. But however, the leadership that can be provided is, again, through their experience, uh, but more specifically to their knowledge. Uh, this is how we want to accomplish something. How do we accomplish it? We'll always have a resource to go to um, who will understand the broader scope of state laws, the broader scope of municipal government, uh, has the education that, in that field, and uh, will be able to provide that leadership that we're looking for. Um, the next is the role of the mayor, and then the appendix, appendicei, I believe is how you say it, uh, that we can um, either go through if people would like to, if I haven't bored people enough, uh, or I'll take questions at this point in time to see if, um, um, if I've covered everything in detail. Thank you very much, Alderman Rinfleisch. This is a very thorough uh, presentation, and I appreciate the work that was done on the committee. This, uh, there was uh, also uh, Alderperson Vanderweel and um, uh, Heidemann. <laughs> Sorry. He's, see, he's up here. So it sounds familiar, right, Joe? Yes. <laughs> um, so we'll uh, take questions now. First of all, we have some questions from the council, and then we'll go to the general public. And um, Alderman Boren. Chair, <clears throat> Alderman Rinfleisch, uh, can you tell me what the implementation schedule would be when we could do this? Do we have to wait uh, depending on whether we decide we're going to have, I'm assuming you're talking about a full-time mayor with this administrator or would that be something to be decided? And when could we implement this if we wanted to? We'd have to wait until the next election. What, what, what are the uh, timetable? The, um, um, the, the first part of that question regarding part-time versus full-time mayor, uh, I think that's a decision of the council in terms of if we move forward with this policy or not, uh, because ultimately you have to pay for it, uh, that position. And um, 
Um, if a full-time mayor, uh, we have a highly paid full-time mayor position uh, in place right now, uh, whereas you go to part-time mayor, you could make some adjustments to that uh, as, as well. Uh, the changes, we could implement the structural changes. We could say this is the direction we're going to go to and create a timetable for uh, when the um, salary agreements is, is finished with their report on what the, the job recommendation should be, when um, um, recruiting should, should be complete, when recommendations should be done, when it should go to civil service, and so on. Um, but um, the actual change, if, if any change, we could do it right now, quite frankly. We could have a city administrator right now, but we could not change the, um, the, the city statuted roles of the mayor or change the mayor's salary until the next election. So we can make the changes uh, depending on for the, after the next election. Um, but again, if we went to the city manager form, which we don't recommend, that we'd absolutely, absolutely have to wait until, after, you know, we'd have to complete it before so we knew that we weren't having a next election because we're going to have that position instead. Uh, but any change to that salary or so on, any candidates need to be aware of that change coming forward. You can't do it midterm. But again, because the city administrator position is created within the council, we can structure that in any way we want within city codes. Uh, we could do it tomorrow if you know there are enough votes um, to, and funds to, to create that position uh, as long as we don't change the roles and duties of the mayor. Did that answer your question? Thank you. Alderman Hanna. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, great presentation. A uh, couple questions, though. Um, this the city administrator model would would free up a mayor um, to promote the city to be in a much more visible marketing role, mm -hmm. and the day to day management would fall to the city administrator. Is that that's, fair to that's say? That's a, a proper assessment. Um, you know, for example, uh, on one hand, the city administrator could be at, in the, in Madison gathering information for the operations of a city uh, for changes in law, but the mayor could be in Madison promoting our, us. The mayor could be in, with businesses. Um, you know, tr asking them to relocate. And, and a trust the day-to-day -day operations is being complete yet. I, and you, you're probably not going to have an answer to this question, but if, of, of cities that have shifted to a city administrator model, can you make some observations about economics? I mean, have they been more successful in recruiting businesses to the community? Have they been more successful in uh, keeping a handle on taxes? I mean, are there, are there some hard evidence that this model has been effective from the business perspective? There are probably information out there. Unfortunately, in the five weeks that we had, that was one area that we had to, we researched the roles of other cities, but not necessarily um, how much they cost, what their salaries were specifically, and the end results of that. That would be something, though, that the committee would hope we reform the committee so we can answer those questions in more detail. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next will be Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, in, in regards to the city administrator, is, is there anything written in the statutes as to uh, how many of the council has to vote to, let's say, remove him if they were dissatisfied with his uh, work? Um, I guess some degree I'll answer the question to my best of my ability, but I'll allow the, the city attorney, uh, if I say anything cor wrong, to correct me, please. <laughs> um, but the um, position is created by the council, um, and um, for removal, that's something that, as we're creating the position, as we're moving forward, we're going to have to create that. We're going to have to say, you know, I would hate to say just, you know, a you know, without cause or with anything else to remove it, but it should be responsive to, you know, to, to us. Uh, the city administrator does report back to um, the council and, to, and specifically in, uh, as, as well as to the mayor. However, though, um, creating that position, one we really should have, that's why I talked about the job expectations, the job duties, uh, annual goals. Um, while personality conflicts may occur, if we have very specific duties that need to be accomplished and are not being accomplished, that's fairly easy. Um, because we can say, you know, here's your annual reviews, here's what we ask you to do, you agree to them every year, you're not meeting those criteria, we need to move on. Uh, and that's something that we have to make sure that we'll, when we, before we create that position, we're very strong on our expectations. I, I think you uh, indicated that they work under a contract at city administrator, or is it on a year to year? Or that's up to the council up to, to decide. The council. If we do a, uh, a five-year contract, 
uh, or if we do an at-will type of employee. Um, my recommendation would not necessarily be an at-will employee because you probably won't get the best of the best. You know, for people relocating, bringing their families here, what have you, they're going to have some expectation that they're going to be here at least for a period of time, as long as they meet their goals. Um, I see you scrum back there. Did I might answer that question correctly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I know you're going through. <laughs> um, a member of the committee who did uh, probably more uh, more research than even I have done. So I just want to make sure that uh, I'm answering that correctly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Alderman Rinfleisch, in some of the documents I've read and some of the things on the internet, I read where some cities have some conflict arise between the uh, city administrator and the city mayor and, or the, the mayor and uh, policies and who administers what and uh, how would the uh, council handle these conflicts and would there be clear cut guidelines set up? The guidelines are the responsibility of the council to set up uh, up front and to, to make sure, because the question is always going to be, who do I report to? You know, if I have a mayor, if I have city administrator, who's the ultimate decision maker? Uh, the short answer to that is the mayor and the council are the ultimate decision makers. And, and in terms of policy decisions, definitely the mayor for overall for the city. Um, but um, because the city administrator reports to the common council um, in, in most cities. But again, so that's how we create it up. Our recommendation would be to be very clear about who's responsible for specific duties. However, be careful though, if we're going to require the city administrator to be responsible for day-to-day -day operations, we should really empower that city administrator to then be in charge of the day-to-day -day operations. And if we create ways around that, you're gonna take away the power of, of that person to actually do the day-to-day -day operations that we're asking them to do. But that's, that's us as we set forth, if we go this direction, to set forth saying these are the specific duties to do so. For example, Police and Fire Commission. That, that's something that the state has statutes for that, that the city administrator has to be aware of those boundaries. Um, the Library Commission, same thing. State s sets up various uh, commissions that, that there are going to be boundaries set up for there. So for the other boundaries that we either want to impose or not to impose, it's up to us to do so. So if there is an unforeseen conflict, the council could be the final resolver of that? Conflict. One thing we talked about in the, um, uh, in the uh, committee is, uh, in, in, in dealing with the situation, is actually forming either a, an executive committee that could be uh, the immediate responder to a problem. So if there's a conflict that comes up, instead of calling all 16 people here, there's a very smaller committee, uh, probably much like our, uh, our sex or sexual uh, harassment policy, where there is a, a smaller committee that responds first uh, uh, immediately to, to anything. Um, and so we would recommend doing so, uh, having that committee being the mayor, the council president, and at least those two people, because that's you know one who is in charge of the city policy, and two who's in charge of the, the other elected officials here. So, you know, in terms of who actually mediates that, I'd, I'd recommend a uh, again documenting this before we create a position, saying this is who will mediate any discussions. If nothing's clear based on these guidelines, they'll make the decision, and the decision is final. And just one other item, <clears throat> I've had several people ask me, and perhaps they don't understand the system really, but they ask, will I be losing any portion of my vote? Will, I, will my vote have less power? Will I have less say-so about our government? And if you hire an administrator who doesn't work out, what's the removal process? Can we, hire, can we unhire him in the middle of, a, of his contract? Um, in terms of the vote power, if we went to, which we do not recommend, the city manager position, I believe in a way you do because you're taking away the executive position of the city from an elected office to an appointed <coughs> office uh, and one that is um, – uh, that operates underneath the state statutes, so it's much more difficult to, to create policies. Um, on a city administrator position, under a contract, you would have to be obviously with cause, uh, and that again would be within our annual reviews, our annual plans, things like that that we sit down and, and discuss with the city administrator. If these things aren't being met, then you can certainly do so. If you leave it at an at-will employee, then there's, there's greater flexibility. Uh, but the, the information regarding the um, who's in charge, uh, and the executive committee and um, you know, who reports to whom actually came from Adam Payne. Uh, as you know, the county has a very similar situation. They don't elect a mayor directly. Uh, there is a chief executive office, which is, in our case, would be the president of the, the county council. Uh, and then there is an appointed um, uh, county administrator with Adam Payne. Um, he was the one that actually recommended that, we, that every year we sit down and we create 
these procedures, create these goals. So one, the city administrator knows what is expected and can follow that plan year to year. And two, the city council can decide if the city administrator is effective or not or needs to be removed year by year because you know, it's very clear of, of what our expectations are. Thank you. Um, any questions from uh, the general public here? With what, uh, yes, um, Mr. Marquia. Yes, please. Oh, no. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, the very first thing that I noticed is this. Is, this report was just due by June 30th, 09. Right. I don't know what the holdup was. So this is very important. Uh, the reason I say this is, you know, when you make a document like this and then you're four months behind it, this doesn't sit well, okay? Mm -hmm. The city, uh, an administrator, uh, I agree with the, the city manager, should not. It's not, should not be recommended. Uh, a city administrator, uh, which in my hometown, which is about 120,000 people, has worked well for us. And w the way our elected officials are elected in this city is a popularity contest. You don't have to have any education. All you have to be is a resident of the city. You can get elected, come sit in the chair, somebody else take you to the office, and we'll guide you through the procedure. Uh, when the alderman asked, how did we ever get where 85% of our budget goes for salaries and benefits for our employees? Then I'm gonna give you a little history when I first moved to this city. And we had the first full-time mayor, which is Zemo Mutes. And as I toured this council and the city hall, I asked him about having five or six employees out of the same plant being elected as aldermen. He said, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little problem. You can load a council up, and that those are all union people. Two of those aldermen became mayor for our city, but it was kind of a loaded council. This is why the city administrator, I think, is a good idea, because you have to have high qualifications for it. Uh, the experience would be definitely a plus. Uh, we elected a, a mayor one time that we had to create a job for a city employee to help him run the city. That employee became the highest paid employee of this city. We eventually abolished that, that position, but that's sad in my estimation. Um, I think the council still, if I'm, I'm right, uh, if, I'm, if I'm reading you right, uh, uh, Alderman Redfish, is the council still dictates to the city administrator what the goals are and direct him, or actually mandate that he do carry out their wishes, right? That's correct. Okay, so he, be, he becomes the CEO of the city. We still have a part-time or full-time mayor that runs the meetings, what have you, okay? But the council still has the reins, am I correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. Just one of the popularity contest winners. Uh, <laughs> 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 fellow popularity <laughs> contest winner. Um, I've always been kind of concerned about the finance department under a city administrator as being kind of our check and balance throughout the city on everything. And it, do you have any models where that is, that is a, a separate function under, under a city administrator's setup? You mean still having a uh, finance director in, in existence and yeah, but, city administrator in existence yeah, as well I'm as mayor? Yeah, looking for independence of the finance department uh, in some structure that you guys, I know you didn't have that long to look at every single one of them. Just wondering if anything pops into head. Um, nothing specific, uh, but it comes down to the fact that it, as we create the position uh, within statutes, uh, within policy here, uh, we can create that separation um, amongst that position as someone that could be a checks and balance as well. Um, the big thing is, is when we do set up a system, though, if it uh, stands outside perhaps norms and we're looking for someone with very specific 
backgrounds, a very specific history, and their experience is a little bit different than what we're looking for. We may not get the best candidates for the area. So I don't know, per se, if that's standard, if we still have the, that chief, uh, you know, the, the finance department or not. Uh, my, ex my expectation would be that we'll find that most cities who have it still do have a finance director um, as well. But um, uh, that's, again, something that the, that the committee, if recreated and if directed to move forward with some recommendations, uh, specific recommendations, I would recommend that we add to that as well to make sure just exactly how does the rest of the, the, the structure look and how do we right. kind of define who has what power, right. who reports to whom. And that's something that, that's important. And that's why the Government Structure Committee, was, I think, was amply named. It wasn't the City Administrator Committee. It was the Government Structure Committee because all these questions from, from ward voting on up to structure of uh, table of organization uh, to management mm -hmm. level and so on, these are all things that one would do in a private business as well. Uh, you would have structured who reports to whom, uh, who has checks and balances power, uh, and um, yeah, I would definitely recommend doing the same thing as well. It's not a free-for-all. You'd have to have very something strict and guideline that everyone can fall back upon and say, I understand this, but this is how, how I read this interpretation. And then Im Im implementing some kind of, of review committee uh, who kind of arbitra arbitrates any of those discu discussions, any, dis any of those disagreements that may come up. Hey, um, we're, according to the agenda, we're giving 40 minutes to this presentation. It's 40 minutes now. Um, is there anything else? Okay, Mayor Susha, come up, please. An ex-popularity contest winner. <laughs> yeah. All right, good to see you. You're going to get tired of seeing me up here pretty soon. I'll be here next week also in front of the council on a different issue. Um, I was not a member of the committee. Wish I would have been, but I thoroughly agree with their findings. I, in the, no, this is years ago, but I had worked with city managers. I had worked with administrators and I find that the administrator form of government is definitely the way to go for the city of Sheboygan, our size. City managers, you've written off, I think that's proper. There seems to be more conflict in cities that have city managers between the council and city manager. So write that one off. City manager is out of the question, I think. City administrator, all you need is one more vote than the next guy or next woman. That's unfortunate, but that's the way the system works. Right now, we have a system just like that. However, I've got to tell you that the, with the safeguards built in for hiring a city administrator, this is definitely the way to go. Along with that, you must, now I know you're going to think, well, it's 100000 a year, 120000 a year. We can't afford that and a mayor, full-time mayor. I say you go to a part-time mayor, which is still elected by the public. You can even go to less aldermen, cut the number of aldermen in half, and those savings alone may make up the difference. Now, if you cut out the administrative assistant, which you really don't need underneath administrative, uh, under the new proposal, you again save possibly 70, 60, I don't know what they're paying these days, but administrative assistant is not necessary. Uh, you heard uh, Mr. Rinfleisch talk about uh, being involved in the negotiations. This man is not only knowing the city management form of government, but he also knows about negotiations and would be in on negotiations. So again, I don't think we'd have to job out some of our negotiations that are being done right now. So again, a savings. I know some of you are thinking just of savings, but it goes beyond that. You're going to get an experienced person in that position uh, with the master's degree, whatever it is, uh, you have to consider that. I've worked, like I said, with all types of administrators, city managers, 
And I have found, and you're going to find that in your documents, the old ones when we had these people in town some years ago, that the most progressive cities had city administrators. You don't need both. Maybe the bigger cities you do, but a city of Sheboygan size, you don't need a full-time city administrator and a full-time mayor. There are still jobs for the mayor to do, not only cutting ribbons and shaking hands, but he's going to run the council. He's still going to have the veto power. That is all still built in. Now, I know you're going to have to have possibly a charter ordinance change if you go to a part-time mayor. So then you vote on that, but I think it's important that you have uh, those th thoughts in mind. Uh, you just don't create a city manager and our city administrator and then, and then stay with the uh, full-time mayor. Uh, that's duplication and it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. Thank you. If there are no other questions or comments, um, thank you very much, Alderman Fleisch, and thanks again to the committee that put in five weeks of hard labor on this. Thank you. We'd like to take a, a break of uh, maybe three or four minutes. The next group wants to set up. So uh, we'll just take a break, and people can leave the chamber if they want for just a few minutes. Okay, we'll get back here at 10-2. Uh, not ready okay uh, just so that I didn't know we were, were being recorded we are being recorded I didn't think we were uh, so everyone Alderman please clip on your microphone or something to uh, get it close to you so the sound carries um, okay and I think maybe we need the light or two off <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to leave the lights on. We're being recorded. <laughs> can, can you see the... Uh, yeah. Can you see what you need to? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Um, Mayor Ryan's going to lead this present part of the presentation. We'll try to keep to 40 minutes again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm Bob Ryan. I am the mayor, also the winner of the latest popularity contest. Uh, this is something that uh, we've been working on uh, for approximately the last four months. And uh, what this is is a new table of organization. Um, basically uh, trying to come up with a, was yeah. with a new model uh, for the city. This is, this is what we're facing right now um, and, and what, what we plan to lay out this evening. We have our current challenges, the underlying logic of this, our suggested changes, and the benefits of the change of this table of organization. Some of our current challenges, uh, right now we have eight departments uh, reporting directly to myself. And uh, that uh, basically takes my attention and, and spreads it across a, uh, a broad range of op operational, uh, strategic, uh, and strategic aspects of the, uh, of the city. So basically what we have is uh, strategic, tactical, and support functions are the, are the uh, three functions of the city. And those are spread amongst our various departments in the city. What this does uh, with all of our individual departments, which uh, Alderman uh, Rindfleisch alluded to, uh, with all these individual de departments, we develop a, a silo effect um, where all individual departments are focusing on their, their individual goals and objectives of their own department. And we do not have a lot of uh, uh, cross-departmental interaction and we uh, do not find a lot of uh, cross-departmental synergies and efficiencies um, because basically everybody is operating on their own. This is uh, a, a, a version of our present um, table of organization. This is a simplified version of it. We have uh, the mayor and the common council. Uh, on the top, we have uh, both uh, elected officials and um, uh, 
city departments that, uh, that meet, uh, that uh, basically answer to commissions, parking and transit, uh, the library, um, and the water utility all uh, have commissions. Um, we have the city attorney, the city clerk, and the municipal court are elected officials. In the city itself, uh, we have a finance director, treasurer. We have a human resources and uh, labor relations director, a planning and development, development director, a public works director, a city assessor, an IT director, a police chief, and a fire chief. And all of these individuals, uh, the way it is laid out right now, answer directly to the mayor and the common council. What we are looking to do is to create a separation between the strategic, tactical, and support functions of the city. Uh, this will basically improve uh, cross-departmental efficiencies um, by, by having uh, basically go going into three uh, directors in the city. Three directors, one director in charge of uh, strategic functions, tactical functions, and support functions. Uh, the idea is to develop a long-term strategic plan, which we have been working on in the city, um, and to realize uh, cross-departmental efficiencies and synergies, and basically to improve our response time to citizens, aldermen, and uh, city employees alike. Uh, through many, uh, many months of, uh, of uh, work and uh, uh, trial and error, I should say, uh, this is what we have come up with. What we have on the top still are our independent uh, committees. We have the elected officials, which is the municipal court, the city clerk, and the city attorney. What we have in the green, in the dark green boxes are our standing committees. The city attorney answers to the law and licensing committee. We have labor relations on the top, which I will discuss in a moment. We still have our three departments that are independent uh, departments that are either utilities, um, the library, parking and transit, they, uh, they all answer to commissions. What we are looking to do in the city here is we have the mayor and common council that hasn't changed. We have a director of administration and finance. Underneath that director of administration and finance we have the city assessor. The human resources manager, we're taking the human resources position, changing it from a director's position to a manager's position. Uh, the, the main goal of that is it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a director uh, with two employees. If this, is, this is truly a, a management position, not a director's position when you have two employees under you. We have accounting under administration and finance, uh, which also has uh, purchasing and risk management. And we have IT. We had present, or, uh, previously we had an IT director also. Um, we have the, we're going to change that position into an IT manager, uh, answering to the director of administration and finance. And in the same respect, that person presently has four employees, uh, will probably never have more than five or six. It's more of a manager's position than a director's position. We have our director of development. In our development department, we have economic development, tourism, city planning and zoning, and building inspection falling under city planning and zoning. The idea of building inspection under city planning and zoning is in order to uh, rebuild a lot of our aging neighborhoods, it's going to take some zoning changes. Uh, right now we have a lot of rundown rental properties. Uh, we're looking to um, basically change the way that we do business in our building inspection department and uh, to, to, to clean up our inner city, to, to bring back our neighborhoods, and this is why building inspection is going to fall under the zoning department. The director of operations, and this is the key to this, uh, to this uh, organizational chart. We have the director of operations. Under the director of operations, we have the fire, police, engineering, and all of public works. The director of operations, the fire and the police chief, the, the goal of the director of operations will be to find synergies between the fire department and police department. The director of operations will not, will not set policy in the fire and police department. The fire chief, police chief are ultimately uh, 
still answerable to the mayor and to the Fire and Police Commission. However, when it comes to operational aspects, when we have a fire department and a police department uh, that are a block away from each other, their headquarters, uh, presently we have in our fire department, we have a mechanic that is also doing all the snow plowing at the fire department. We have a police mechanic down at the city garage. Um, we have uh, right now in the police department uh, looking at possibly uh, having to hire out snow plowing um, or get public works to do the, the, the police department. Uh, there's still the sidewalks that are in question because we no longer have municipal employees there doing the uh, janitorial work that used to do the snow blowing and all. Um, it will be the director of operations uh, task to find synergies between those two departments. Not with how they do fire protection, not with how they do police protection, not in, not in criminal investigation, but in the operations end of, 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 the, uh, of the functions. Engineering is, is another department um, that is falling under the director of operations. Presently, engineering is under development. Um, some people be believe that it belongs under development. Other people believe that uh, engineering belongs under public works. Um, after considering this long and hard, I believe that engineering belongs under the director of operations. Engineering has two separate functions. One function of engineering is development and working with development, working with uh, city planning. The other um, aspect of engineering is um, working with public works, uh, maintenance engineering, and working on a, 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 with the public works department. If we put engineering under development, um, then it turns into development engineering. If we put it under public works, it's public works engineering. The idea is to keep it under the director of operations so that it can be shared equally between, and where needed, between development and between public works. Also, we have um, public works under the director of operations. We still have Bill Bittner, the director of public works. However, um, the director of operations, his, uh, his uh, main function being to find synergies within departments um, will be to come up with a plan for public works to gain efficiencies in public works. Um, our public works department right now, as we all know, uh, we have a lot less people than we used to have. Public Works has taken a huge hit over the last four, five years on personnel. We need to take the people that we have in Public Works. Uh, we need to get uh, some maintenance programs, et cetera. Uh, our Director of Operations will be tasked uh, with assisting Public Works and finding those synergies amongst the department in order for Public Works to run more efficiently. As you can see, the lines drawn from the different directors um, in, the, in the different de departments uh, answering to the, the standing committees. If you look at the key, we have, uh, um, we have the standing committees. We have uh, the departments in blue reporting to separate boards. We have the elected positions. We have the new position or functions, and basically that is the director of operations. And we have... Um, I cannot read the last one, related positions. Oh, retitled positions, rather, I'm sorry. Retitled positions being the Director of, of Administration and Finance presently, that is our, our Director of Finance. Um, our Director of Development is, is still our Director of Development, obviously. Um, so what, when, when, we, when we look at this, um, basically this is not a model um, that has been used extensively in government. This is not a government model, this is more of a business model. And if it works in the business world, I believe it can work in the government world. Um, the city administrator's position, which was offered to you again tonight, um, could be something that the uh, council elects to do. I was elected to be a full-time mayor. I've been the mayor for six months. I will be the full-time mayor for another three and a half years. Um, our, our you know, I, I'm sure people are wondering who's who in this, uh, in this whole scheme of things. Uh, Terry Hansen is presently our Director of Finance. Um, Terry has proven himself in this city with his knowledge, with his experience. Um, Terry will be, become the Director of Administration and Finance. Perfectly capable of doing the job. If anybody has any doubts, you're more than willing to, to, uh, to question that. 
Our Director of Development is Paulette Enders, has been our Director of Development, will remain our Director of Development. Our Director of Operations, rather than going out and putting out a, uh, putting, putting out a, uh, 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 a job notice on that, my intention is to promote from within. We have an individual in our city um, that I have come to know and respect greatly over the last six months, has helped me out immensely, and that is our present city assessor, uh, Dave Lutzke. Dave's background is not in being a city assessor. Dave had never, never been a city assessor until coming back to Sheboygan. Dave moved back to Sheboygan for a reason, because he grew up here, he had not lived here in 30 years, and he wanted to come back, and he took the city assessor's position to do that. Um, Dave's background is in engineering and operations. Dave has been in the corporate world, started out at uh, GE. His uh, most recent job has been with Walgreens, um, running Walgreens distribution with somewhere around 1,200 to 1,500 employees under him. Uh, he is well-schooled in the field of operations. I have come to trust Dave, to know Dave well. Um, Dave can move from being our city assessor to move into the director of operations position. Our city assessor, we can promote from within. Our city assessor's department, Dave has taken that right now and through technology has eliminated two positions in that department. Dave can, can basically go from city assessor to director of operations. We can promote from within on the city assessor's department and just hire one more person in the city assessor's department. So to me, this makes a lot of sense. What this will do for me personally is this will free me up on a lot of the operational aspects of the city. This will free, free me up to do what I campaign to do and that is to develop this city, to bring business to this city, um, to work with our companies, to preserve, our, to preserve businesses, and to go out uh, through our economic development and bring jobs to our city. That is what I've done in the past, is the business world, that is what I am good at, that is what I enjoy doing. Will I still have a pulse on everything else in the city? Yes, I will on a daily basis. This is something that I asked for the council's approval on in order to move the city forward. This is nothing that has happened overnight. Like I say, we've been working on this for four months, maybe more. I've been the mayor for six months. This didn't happen overnight. This makes sense to me. And I uh, welcome any questions. Alderman, Alderman Hanna. Mayor, would you, would you be opposed in this model to having the Director of Operations uh, report to one standing committee, perhaps the Finance Committee, and looking at this? Just this kind of a... I would not have a problem with that. Yeah. Truthfully, the Director of Operations will be working hand-in-hand -hand with the Mayor. Yeah. Um, that could be something that... Just, uh, just, just think of one line... As far as, far as, yeah, and I, and I see that right now, that uh, Administration and Finance goes to the Finance Committee, Development does also. I could see the operations. Uh, I could... Uh, that doesn't disrupt your workflow? No, it doesn't. And, and truthfully, on, in the operations end, uh, I will be working on a daily basis with the Director of Operations. Um, I'm not sure who, who had their name, uh, light on first. Uh, Alderman Bowers? Mayor Ryan, uh, do you have any uh, anticipated increase in costs? The Director of Operations will be funded independently by the departments under the Director of Operations. Um, going to this model, we will actually, on the Human Resources Manager, we will save money from what we used to pay the Director of Human Resources. On the IT Manager, we will save money from what we, will, what we had paid a director of, of IT. Um, will the director of operations get a pay increase um, above what the city assessor is making right now? I would think so, but that would be up to our salary and grievances committee. Thank you. Okay, um, Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, do we have, will we have job descriptions for these 
three uh, positions? Yes, there will be jobs. The job descriptions for the okay. positions. I know that one uh, uh, one concern was the director of operations, especially with the, the uh, fire chief and the police chief. Um, before this is passed, obviously, there will be be job descriptions that will be vetted by the Salary and Grievances Committee. Thank you. And one more question. Now, uh, the assessor, unless I don't remember correctly, does an, assess an assessor for a municipality have to meet state codes regarding education? Yes. I thought that was a special thing. Do, do our employees, other than Dave Lutsky, have that special? Yes, we do. We have two employees that have that education. Okay, because it's a special something, yes, degree it, or qualification or, yes. or we do test. have We do have two employees, I believe, now that are both qualified. Correct, Dave? Yes. Okay. Assessor, two certifications. Right. And we have two besides myself. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Wangaman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Mayor, looking at the chart up here, <clears throat> I see uh, where each position is listed as manager, 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 but we get down to public works and he's listed as a director. That is because we presently have a director of public works. It has always been my policy, okay, in my, my own business life. If you have somebody in a position, the worst thing you can do to that, per to that person is demote them. If we have a director of public works, um, if somebody does not want that director to remain the director of public works, in my opinion, if you're going to demote that person, you might as well fire them. Because if you want to demoralize somebody in their position, go ahead and demote them. I would rather see somebody fired than demoted. So in other words, uh, people like the police chief, the fire chief, their wages would stay the same? Yes, they would. And uh, are there any other uh, people who are now directors who would become administrators? Uh, we, we have right now, we have the HR manager, obviously the city assessor, uh, promoting from within from the city assessor, we can save money on that. The IT manager, which was a director, will be the IT, the, the IT director will become the IT manager, but those two positions are open right now. Um, other than that, we have uh, our director of development is already a director. Um, engineering, we have a city engineer who is a department head and will remain a department head. The managers are still department heads, however, they are not directors. I had a constituent call me today and she expressed great concern with the uh, director of operations because we're looking at some rather technical positions there, such as police chief, fire chief, uh, engine, city engineer, et cetera, et cetera, so forth. Uh, this director of operations, as, am I correct in assuming that what you explained before is that he would not really interfere, or maybe interfere isn't the right word, but actually try to run these departments other than... No, he will not run the departments. He will find synergies between the departments, which is something that we've been looking at at City Hall here right now. It is why we took, um, is, it is why we, we, we moved building inspection from the third floor down to the first floor. And then we have city development coming right next to building inspection because building inspection, building inspection is under development. Um, the, the, the director of operations job will be to find synergies be, within those departments to work with those department heads to work alongside of them in, in developing these synergies, not to do their job. Apparently there's uh, some great concern among city employees uh, with reference to that question is, uh, you know, are we gonna get somebody running our department that doesn't know what he's doing? Uh, no, because the people running the departments are still running the departments. Okay. That person is there to find synergies between departments. Very good. But that was the uh, deep concern that uh, some city employees had expressed. No, if, if we look, we still have a fire chief, we still have a police chief, we still have a city engineer, a director of public works, a director of development, we still have a city assessor, HR manager, <laughs> IT manager. Fine, thank you. Okay. Okay. Alderman Hanna. Yes, Mayor. Tell me about the labor relations box. The labor relations box. Um, this is one reason why we are going with an HR manager. What we found in HR, and, and this is something that's, that's, that we've seen um, over the years, especially uh, in, in my short time in, as the mayor, um, HR is a, is a uh, kind of a Jekyll and Hyde type of position. You have your human resources end, 
which your human resources and your benefits end, where you're the good guy. And then you have your labor relations end, which you're the bad guy. And one day you have somebody in front of you and you're having to do something for them in a human resources capacity. And the next day you may be sitting across the bargaining table from them. And it's a, it's a very precarious position for an HR manager or director to be in sometimes. What we are looking at right now, especially with where we are in the middle of negotiations with our various department, with our various unions, is having that labor relations position as a separate portion. And right now we have, uh, we have uh, Tom Rice, who is a contract employee in that capacity. In the future, Tom will be going through this entire labor negotiation. We're not going to switch midstream. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we can hire an HR manager allow Tom to continue in labor relations. In the long run, um, which I have talked to the city attorney, but this would be way, way down the road, uh, we now have an elected city attorney. As long as Steve McLean is the city attorney, he will remain an elected official because he was elected to do the job. In the long run, we may have a director of, of uh, legal services that could be the city attorney and also do the labor relations. Yep. Farther, farther down the line, but that's, uh, yep. you know, another thing about this, this is not designed to take our present leaders of our city, to take our present department heads and step on their toes. Um, this is designed to assist our present department heads and to move the city along, to, to, to basically try to, try to streamline things. Okay, um, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I've been in on some of the discussions uh, earlier this year on this concept, and I really, like, I really like the concept, but I think the thing we're gonna have to nail down, some of the concerns that Alderman Wangaman had, is a job, an airtight job description so everybody knows who's reporting to who. I also think salary and grievances, I like some of the, uh, in the previous presentation by Alderman Rindfleisch, some of the qualifications, educational requirements, uh, and experience that were in that position. I think salary and grievances have to, has to come up with qualifications for this position, and then also ultimately what the salary is gonna be. But I think job description is gonna be very, very important for this thing to work. Right, and, and, and that doesn't only go for these three positions. Uh, we are presently redoing every job description in the city. We have a lot of job descriptions right now that are uh, dated from uh, the late 80s and early 90s. You know, these are job, description bef job descriptions before anybody ever heard of a term called windows. And uh, we have uh, our, our present uh, uh, acting uh, uh, HR manager has directed all department heads to basically rewrite all job descriptions and bring them up to date. Um, is there any input from the people that are, you know, are in the back? Um, either department heads, uh, employees, uh, citizens, questions? Uh, Paulette? Have you come up first? And um, do you want to use? Maybe she wants to use this. Uh, so, uh, you want to use this? One? Okay. This is a better mic, maybe. This is, why don't you use this mic? It's better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is it on? Yes, it is, okay. but you can speak louder, um, I think. And I guess this is a little bit difficult for me because typically, you know, I, I support mayors and their, you know, decisions and their policies, and Mayor Ryan already knows this, um, that on this one we, we did come up with somewhat of a compromise, but um, I'm not in support of the changes um, that are proposed to be made, in particular um, to my department. And I have a lot of different notes and I'll, I'll try to cover as many as what I can. I think one of the things that stands out is engineering has been in planning for approximately two years. And that was a new change. I would say that it was quite cutting edge, maybe like this in the state of Wisconsin. Um, I've talked to a couple other communities that uh, very much like the concept of having planning, development, economic development, engineering, building inspection together. There are a lot of synergies in those divisions. It ends up becoming a one-stop shop for both our citizens and our developers. I talked to a developer today, and I haven't had a lot of time because I haven't had a lot of information on this, but the one developer said um, for him, 
you know, it was a, a good thing. Probably the one hang up was when we didn't have a city engineer for a while and Ryan Sazma, our city engineer is not a department head. He's actually a manager in the department. So that um, where he's reporting to the director of operations, just so you know, he's not a department head. Um, there are a lot of different functions that cross over between our divisions that I think create great efficiencies. One of them is just the sheer fact that we're developing the city, we're building the city. Um, we have grants that we write, grants that we administer, grants that are funding a lot of the infrastructure that you are seeing today in the city. And without that um, cooperation and that working together, um, I don't think that we would have that. Um, I, you know, I, I don't want to get into, you know, I want to just talk about the structure, you know, and not necessarily people or persons, but um, to have to go, and the, and the mayor knows this, I've talked to him about this, for me to have to go to, you know, a director of operations to get to Ryan and to the staff, I don't think is very efficient. And I feel that if there's, let's say, communication problems, maybe either with the new director of operations or the director of public works, we can work that out and make that happen. And you know, as far as the return on investment, our return on in investment is the building of our community and getting you know this one stop shop. Now that we're, that we're immediately adjacent to building inspection, even in the, the few days that I've been in the office, I can't believe how nice that is to have that, um, that, that closeness and close proximity both from a staff perspective and a client perspective and um, we've just had this two years with engineering and I think if Steve came up and talked Chad came up and talked Ryan came up and talked it's like it's it's really been working very nicely and I don't know that um, you know we had like any new department um, you know when you're restructuring them you may have some bumps in the road but um, I think that we've been working through all of those and working very, very well together. I wanted to be democratic. I had both um, Larry Hillblink and building inspection and Ryan and engineering talk to all of the employees. And I'll be honest, all but one thought, you know, okay, maybe I'd be okay with a different structure. Every other one liked the structure that we have. And uh, they've all been willing to work and to change and I think the mayor's right in building inspection. We really need to get out, look at our properties, focus in on that. And I don't think that there's any issues with doing that. I strongly believe in that. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Alderman Gisha. Thank you. Uh, I think this is a really great structure. Uh, it's not innovative because it's the way virtually every successful business runs. Uh, but to apply it the way it was done, I think, is, is great. I like the team set up. I particularly like changing from directors to managers. When you have a nice uh, managerial team at the top, I think that's incredibly efficient. Um, something that maybe hasn't been discussed and actually, um, not to pick on Paulette, but she was up there, um, and that's accountability. Uh, I was not for, for instance, using what Paulette described, all these departments underneath the director of development. There's no accountability on any of them. Uh, I don't care if you're Donald Trump, you can't be, and I've said this to Paulette, so I'm not talking out of school either, you can't be, you can't spend 100% of your time on development, which is what this thing does, and, and, uh, and run three other departments. You just can't do it, I don't care who you are. And I think that's a, an issue, frankly. Uh, I think uh, this promotes accountability for each of these departments to do what they were hired to do and what they do what they do best, and and to and and, and to find the the cross synergies on on expense sharing and, and things together. I know people don't want to move who they report to or who they don't report to. They probably have various reasons for not doing it, but that would be the case anywhere. And if we never did that, we would have we would have. 20 people working in one department that we don't have any longer. Um, you can't, it's great input, but this was also four months worth of input from a lot of people that put this together. So I, I, think, uh, I think the advantage actually over this with the city administrator position is this is less political. 
These are actually people managing, and I know city administrators get political. You can talk to Adam even at the county. It gets, it gets very political for him. These don't have, these three, this team of management doesn't have it, doesn't have politics. So as far as breaking up departments and realigning them, uh, I think that will promote accountability. Um, either we, we have our streets cleaned or we don't. Either we have development or we don't. And well, we can't, haven't cleaned our streets because I've got three other departments that report to me that take my time away. These people will be focused more on their positions and I, and I particularly like, and this is the time to do it because we have so many openings, I really like this going to managers instead of directors because as people know who get involved with the city, we don't just have directors, we have deputy directors <laughs> and then managers that are eat those deputy directors. There's a, it's like a multi-layer cake and this really cleans that up. I, I think it's a step perhaps toward a lot of the goals that were presented by Alderperson Reinflesch. I think it meets a lot of those goals and kind of tailors it to the city. So I, I, I think that's, I know you guys put a lot of work into it and I think uh, it's well thought out. Um, are there, okay, uh, Alderman Hanna has one more statement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I completely agree with Alderman Bourne that uh, this hinges on uh, strong job descriptions and delineation of reporting structure, in particular with the director of operations, uh, with those groups that are underneath him. It's, it, it, there's gonna it's gonna really take some craftsmanship to, to get that, uh, to work to get the synergies. What I'm particularly pleased with is the way that I think our standing committees work very well and the way that you have woven the standing committees into the into the organizational structure I think is real important because I think that uh, that really helps with communication and, and reinforces and checks and balances all right um, thank you very much um, uh, we still have some comments we're coming on an hour and a half and this meeting and we we have a schedule, or the agenda said, you know, that we'd be wrapping this up in 90 minutes. So, um, do we have some quick comments? Yeah, do, do I, um, some, there's two people that want to speak. Is that, do you want to do that yet? Um, okay, Marge, you want to come up first? Well, no one will hear you if you don't want to be recorded. Okay. <laughs> Use the, use the microphone, please. Yeah. Yes, please. I have three questions for the mayor. The one thing is that you said that the city assessor will become your operational person. Okay, and that somebody from within would be promoted to the city assessor. And then you had mentioned something about a hiring of another person. But I thought a hiring freeze was in place that we wouldn't be able to hire anybody. Am I correct? Yes, Emil. Yes. Well, I know it is not. I'll turn it on. Thank you. Um, a hiring freeze in, is in, in, in effect for the entire city. Okay. Okay. However, the council at any point, um, it's not like since we've had a hiring freeze in effect, nobody has been hired. Okay. Um, if you know what I mean. Okay. If, if, the, if we no longer have, um, which we've, we've already eliminated um, a, a couple of positions in the, in the, um, in the city assessor's department. Uh, if the city assessor is now to leave and we promote from within, I think then we're up to three positions in that department. Obviously, um, at some point you have to, you know, get to, if that person is moving up to city assessor, we're going to have to hire another person with an assessor's two license for that, for that department. Okay. Question number two, what is going to happen to our deputy directors? If you're going to have all of this you have like uh, David Beeble, who's deputy director of public works. What is gonna take place with him? The, the only deputy director out there right now is David Beeble, the deputy director of public works that I'm aware of. Um, and that would be something to be worked out in the Department of Public Works between the, the director of operations, the director of public works, and the deputy director of public works. Okay, question number three. Uh, when you are um, putting some of these into um, uh, operational um, director or manager, whatever you're calling them, that they're going to get raises because they're going to get more responsibility. Now, Paulette Enders, who has taken on a lot more responsibility and she has gotten raises concerning this, are you not going to take money away from her? I do not believe in demoting people myself, no. Okay, who would have... 
I don't know how to put it the right the, way. The director of operations will be basically funded by a portion coming out of every department under that, depart that, that director of operations. Okay, as far as Paulette Enders goes, our director of development, she will remain our director of development. The only thing that is leaving the, the Department of Development is engineering, which we still have a city engineer and always have. Okay, and if I, if I may answer the question regarding engineering. Um, of course, the, the development wants to keep engineering under development. Public Works would love to have engineering under Public Works. The way I see engineering working most efficiently is to have part of engineering working on development and part of engineering working under Public Works on maintenance engineering. This, this is what makes sense for engineering, rather than having, you know, if we give engineering to Public Works, then development's going to say we don't get enough. We give it to development, Public Works says we don't get enough out of engineering. This is, this is the solution. Okay, but since you're taking away those responsibilities that she now has. She will, she will still have responsibility with engineering because a lot of engineering will still be working with development. Okay. And Public Works will also be working with engineering. So where does the operational person come in then? The operational <laughs> person <laughs> comes in to it. find those synergies to get those people all working together and to, to gain efficiencies. That's the whole idea. If we didn't need efficiencies in the city, why have a director of operations? If we don't, if we, if our city is operating so efficiently now, if our operations are so efficient, we don't need a director of operations. I guarantee you there's not one department in our city that cannot become more efficient. That is the whole purpose of this. Why can we not do that then without a uh, operational? Because purpose? right now we have a bunch of silos, which was the which was the, the, the TO before this. So what you're saying is some of these department heads are not doing the jobs that you want them to do? No, they are all running their departments just fine. The director of operations will find synergies between these departments, which is not unlike what we're doing in City Hall here, moving people around, that people are going to be working together. Okay. <laughs> and thank you, Marge. You are more than welcome, Mr. Mayor. Okay, one more statement from Lee Montemayor. I'll try to be brief. Okay, thank you. Madam Chairman. Uh, uh, Mayor Ryan, I'm not opposed to change. Uh, I think it's great. What I am opposed to is um, uh, I haven't seen none of these documents that you have someplace. Uh, I don't know where they came from. I don't, the public doesn't. What, what documents would that uh, be, Lee? This table of organization that you have here. It's, that's it. Uh, okay, what I'm, what I'm saying is it's kind of hard for the public to say, in 40 minutes, you're going to make this change with the 10-minute discussion. Uh, Lee, this is an initial. I'm, I don't. This, I, I, this I, I is don't an initial debate, presentation. I don't want. I don't. I know it's a presentation. I don't want to debate with you. Okay. What I, What I'm asking you is to hold this at least 30 days so everybody can see what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. One of the things that I do have a, a problem with is the engineering taken out of the uh, redevelopment uh, director's. Uh, Thing. Because if you remember, one of the things that happened to our city when we developed all the land on the south side and on the west side is we developed all that land, put in 15-inch storm sewers. They needed to be twice that size. That's what happened when you don't have the right place, you know, the right peg in the right place. You could have done this. We could have done this. It's not your fault. I'm talking about their organization many years ago. This is what happened. And that was a big fiasco there. You have to agree on that. That's the reason I'm saying that you ought to hold this for at least 30 days, come back to the Committee of the Whole, then try and then. Okay, Lee, if I, if I may answer your question. Sure. Uh, we are not looking to institute this this evening. This is the Committee of the Whole. This is not the Common Council making this decision sir. tonight. This is, this is a presentation to the public and the Committee of the Whole. This is not a decision to be made tonight anyway. But, but you asked for an approval. That's the reason I'm asking. I'm saying they should hold this. Well, and come I'm, I'm here to present this. The, the, the committee of the whole cannot approve this. Okay. They, they cannot. The Common Council passes it. I'm not here to base, sir. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Mayor Ryan, you wanna f did you want to finish something up? Or were you um, yeah, if I, if I may say one thing. Um, you know, I can see people's, you know, some people's reservations with this. Uh, what we have to remember is, is change is not a four-letter word. Now, change is not a bad thing. Change must happen uh, in order for progress to be made. 
And uh, this is, you know, like I say, this is not a fly-by-night operation. We've, we've been working on this for many months. Uh, this has taken many different forms. Um, and this is what we've come up with after approximately four months of work. I, I believe in this. I believe in 100% in it. I am willing to stand behind any questions that anybody may have. Because I believe in this 100%. I think this is the future of our city. This will give me the ability to do what I ran to do, which is to develop this city. This will give us the opportunity to, to become efficient, to become operationally efficient in this city, which is where we need to be. We can't continue to operate the way we are because we're going to hit a brick wall. We're not going to have any more money next year than we had this year. We're going to have less. And it looks like in 11, we'll even have less. Between now and then, we have to find the efficiencies to get this city running with less money. We're going to have no choice. So we have to remember that change is not a bad thing. This is designed to do just that, to gain efficiencies in our city and to allow myself to concentrate not only on that, but on the development of our city for our future. So that's about all I have to say, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mayor. Our job. Um, as a group, uh, on the last part of the agenda, it says recommendation to the Common Council. Does anyone have some idea um, that you want to put forth on some idea of how to work with all the information we received this evening and it was presented this evening and it was discussed? Um, how we want to go forward on this? Um, I do think we do have to respond to it. We can't just say it's very nice and go home. Um, what is the next step that we feel we need to do as a group? Um, either you know, sending something to council or putting something in a committee or something else, um, I think we need to bring out some ideas. I think uh, Alderperson Montemayor might be first on this. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think Alderman Rinfleisch uh, requests that we start that committee, uh, continue with that committee. I think that's a good idea. OK, and that's the, uh, regarding the study of the city administrator yes. recommendation. OK. Do you need a, a motion for that, or, or we what, could, what action we could have would a you like for that? We could have a motion right now, to because that, that's been requested of us to Yes, please, to I do would that. like to We're, we're to behind the schedule on that. So Sorry. you're making that motion, and yes. then Alderman uh, Sirk is seconding the motion to continue with the study on the um, development of a city administrator uh, structure, city structure, government structure. Any discussion on that? There's a, a person second on that. Yes, uh, Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, as past president of the committee chair, um, uh, just a bit of information that the committee does not actually exist. It cannot just be reformulated. We would actually have to create the committee, create what we did in the past to, uh, you know, the structure, who was on it, did we have public people on there again, who was the people on there again. It could be a simple document simply saying, creating the document saying the same people if, if desired. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the same committee members are interested or not. Um, the other thing, though, is the name of it really is, is the Government Structure Committee. Uh, and if um, this type of structure is in place, uh, it's the change, like, as, he, as the mayor said, is not a four-letter word. Um, the great thing about a, the city administrator form of government is that we dictate what a city administrator is. And if the council decides to go in this particular direction, there's a reason not to. It still falls within what we're looking for, uh, professional management. Uh, but to echo some discussions in the past, that we definitely need to make sure that salary grievances are active in that process because those job descriptions are going to be absolutely key. What are the requirements? Um, what educational uh, background do we need for each one of those positions? Um, what are the salaries going to be? Um, so while I'm definitely not opposed to recreating that committee, uh, I think it's up to the council to um, decide what is the structure of the committee, but I would definitely ask that we add some members of the, uh, the mayor's office, the um, uh, Salary and Grievances Committee uh, to do that as well. Uh, and I think that might be an appropriate place to refer um, this table to. Uh, I guess the other point of order is that while well, we have a document under number four, which is resolution 240-809, there is no document to be referred according to our agenda. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think though that really isn't a difficulty if we create a place a resource to discuss this either to salary grievances as it exists or a new government structure committee uh, for this to go to. But I don't think we can really take action on 
this presentation, uh, we can simply make a recommendation to the council about a broader, you know, the one document, file it, uh, do whatever on 240.08.09, uh, and create a committee to hear proposed changes would be appropriate. All right. Um, are you making a, well, we, we have one motion, resolution on the floor right now, so we can't do another one yet. Uh, Alderman Gisher. Thank you. Just an idea. We do have a committee in place for this kind of stuff, uh, or for things like this, that I think contains every standing committee chair, which would encompass your salary and grievance stuff, and, and that's the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, that we wouldn't have to recreate. It's not like the committee's going to go through all the same data that the, that the previous committee put together, that data, that work was done. Um, we have this, and that might be an all-encompassing alternative that already exists and is in place to handle things like this. Just a thought. All, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I'm, in full, I'm in full support of this, of this rather than the, uh, than, the, <coughs> than the city administrator. However, uh, I think it's very important if, if we're going to send it to strategic fiscal planning or salary and grievance, although the chairman of salary and grievance is on strategic fiscal planning, but I, it's ultimately a, just super important that we nail down the job description and the qualifications and the salary range. That's, that's the only thing, you know, I'm ready, I, I, I think it's great the way it's set up, but we have to nail down those things by either the salary and grievance committee itself or strategic fiscal planning. Are you talking about this? I'm hey, talking the about resolution this. is not about this. The resolution is about the city administrator. That's about the, the, the this one here that okay. we, the first. Well, uh, I, I can speak to that. I'm not I'm not going to support going to the city city administrator form of government, but I will support this okay. with the caveats that we gotta we gotta nail down the loose ends on it. Okay. All right. Speaking to the resolution that's on the floor. I, I thought we had a motion. motion. Well, I mean a motion. Yeah. Speaking to the motion that's on the floor, we're discussing the motion that's on the floor. On Alderman Renfleisch, you have something? Does Alderperson Kittleson have something about this too? You were first, I think. Okay, Alderperson Kittleson, how about the about motion on the floor? The motion on the floor. Uh, we just, I, I guess I'd like to hear it again. The motion on okay. the floor is to? Is to, to follow through and, and continue the study for city administrator to develop as they have on their resolution here to develop such ordinances and uh, salary scales and things that are needed for to, this position sure. to it, assign it to a certain group. To, to, for and would we want to send that to this uh, to strategic kind of uh, planning committee for further study? I don't, I don't think that was the motion. I think no? The no, they didn't say that in it. This is just in the comment saying right. that. But, but that's not the, with Gina, I think that her motion hey, that she right. disagrees. All the, all the person, Montemayor, you want to repeat what you just because that particular committee did so much work and they knew how far they got and they knew which questions they were not able to explore and which and they needed more answers on some of the things i would I, my motion is to recreate that committee okay. with as many of those same members as possible because they would know where they left off and what what answers they should be looking for mm -hmm. to continue that study yes correct okay then that's not as far as i was mentioning I would second that. Well, it has been seconded. Yeah. Okay. okay. We're just doing this discussion on this motion. And you have something to say uh, to me? Please, I, 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 I'm going to vote no on it because I think strategic fiscal planning is the place to be. Okay. I think that's what it's for. It's for strategy. It's for fiscal planning. And it contains all the elements that Alderperson Reinflesch mentioned that's needed and others have mentioned needed to come to some sort of conclusion. The data is already there on, on the stuff. Uh, it, it, uh, I think that's where it belongs. That's the only reason I'd be voting no on it, because I think it really does need to go to strategic, strategic fiscal planning. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just to respond to the questions uh, before uh, regarding strategic fiscal, I think if the committee decides to analyze and implement this, um, strategic fiscal is definitely the place to go. I mean, decisions obviously have been made. We're looking at how this, this works, opening discussion to see how, how to make this work. I think it's most appropriate that way. 
Um, however, if, we're, if we are to continue city administrator position, there's just um, uh, one thing I want to point out is, is when we created that position, it was felt that it was vital to have public input. Uh, some representatives of our gr gr greater society within the city uh, to research and uh, study um, uh, the, this form, structure form of government. Uh, that is obviously one thing that, that strategic fiscal would not have is public input. Outside of public speaking on that, we actually had committee members that were responsible uh, for gathering information as well. Um, so I'm going to vote yes on the motion to create the government structure committee. We're free. We have no budget. There is no <laughs> <laughs> expenses to the city for, for our time uh, to be on that committee. Um, because beyond just the city administrator position, if you look at the, the appendicide that, that are in there, there's a lot of other areas that we can find savings within um, city government, uh, within, elect, within the elected side or otherwise uh, as well. And we would definitely like to pursue that, those goals as well. Plus, we'll be a resource that there actually can be city, citizen members on that board uh, speaking as well. Um, however, if the direction, if this committee desires to go this pro process instead, uh, while I still like to see the city, the government structure committee back in form, uh, I think you are right that the strategic fiscal can, can weigh the merits of this. Uh, it's really two separate issues, I think. Okay. Um, all right. We're, time is moving along here. Uh, Alderman Bach. Thank you, Madam Chair. A couple of thoughts. One is there are probably two different timelines here. I think this mayor has asked us to approve this plan so that he can execute it while he's the mayor. This will help him execute his plan as mayor more effect, uh, efficiently. So I think that whatever we need to decide and to learn more and for the public to learn more, we should probably put this on, and I don't mean the word fast track because it's a done deal, but the decision making process for this should probably be put on a fast track. Whereas I think we probably all need to learn a whole lot more about the implications and stuff that, that great work by the way, Eric, on that, your presentation, that's great stuff we need to be learning. I, I, I have great confidence that if Alderman Reinfleisch reconstitutes that group, they can learn enough so that on a different timeline we can implement that. We've got Mayor Ryan for the timeline that we've got him and that gives us some breathing time on this, uh, this other plan. So a couple of thoughts. One is I, I think we as a team can move this forward faster so this mayor can get his work done with this structure. And two, Alderman Ryan, I'd ask Alderman Reinfleisch if there's anything, any guidance he would want from this body about what his, what is it, what are our questions, what would we want him to bring back for us to be able to actually make decisions on whether we would want to move forward with his plan for, uh, for the city administrator. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, um, thank you. Uh, Alderman Bourne, oh, okay, Mayor Ryan. Uh, thank you, Alderman. Uh, Alderman Bauk kind of uh, spoke my mind there. Um, obviously, on the city administrator, um, if, if the council so chooses to go that route, uh, that is a long-term objective. Um, this, I do not want to be tied up for six months as people are throwing around city administrator. If the council chooses city administrator in the future, that would be up to the council. I'm looking to, to institute this uh, in order to do my job. Thank you. All right, let, um, let's keep house here and um, on the uh, motion to move the study of the administrator, city administrator further with further discussion and a, a committee which, with public input to be structured. Um, all those in favor? Roll call. Oh, okay, roll call vote. Okay. Yes, yes. Alderman Rinfleisch. Right. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'll just respond to the, the, the questions that uh, were posed to me. Um, quite frankly, there's a, a, a lot of information that the Government Structure Committee could look at. Uh, I think if we vote to restructure that committee to look at those questions, we do need some guidance. We had very specific guidance uh, last time around. Um, at this point in time, it's probably not the opportune place to discuss that. What right. I recommend is if the committee does this, this committee does decide to recommend to the full council the restructuring of that, uh, the committee is restructured. Uh, we bring back ideas to the full council for right. approval before we move forward. Otherwise, we can be discussing right. for years and not getting anywhere. Okay. Uh, so, yes, we would need that. Uh, but if the council votes that way, we'll con uh, whoever's on that committee, I'd say recommend come back with ideas about what we'd like to discuss for approval so we're not wasting our time. Uh, second of all, um, echoing the comments, um, change happens all the time. Uh, this isn't a debate between one form or the other form quite frankly, and I think people are, are feeling that way right now. Or we're doing a city administrator or we're doing this. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, the government structure committee is looking specifically at making those synergies and efficiencies that the mayors are talking about right here. 
Uh, is this the same structure that the committee recommended? No. Is it a structure that fits many of our recommendations? Yes. Uh, so one doesn't have to be for or against either one of these issues. It's if you're looking to make some changes, go ahead, let's make some changes. If we're looking at long-term changes for generations beyond, we can do that as well. Because uh, as Bob mentioned, we have a full-time mayor regardless and for, for another three and a half years. And so changes can't be made anyway with what the government structure committee will be looking at. So we can do both is what I'm saying. Uh, just a policy order though, again, because there is no document under number five, I would ask that the chairman of the um, uh, mm -hmm. Strategic Fiscal Committee uh, simply uh, announce a date and put it on the agenda since we really can't refer a document. Mm -hmm. That would also save some time that because there is no document to refer to the council that okay. we could start at any time. There's no referral of a committee. So because there is no document listed in the, in the agenda. Um, so okay. that can just be simply created, put on the agenda and discussed. Okay. Um, uh, let's, can we get the motion going on the um, city administrator and then let's do the TO and then we can talk about gotcha. how we handle that officially or um, legally, whatever we need to do. So uh, let's have a roll call vote and this is to uh, recommend to the council to forward this document back with the resolution to be followed through with a special committee appointed. Um, uh, can we call the vote please? Yeah. Lawrence? No. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Um, Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Ivan? Aye. Uh, Aye. Tittleson? Aye. Dionis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Mindflesh? Aye. Motion Aye. After the vote. Mm -hmm. Sir? Aye. Vanderwilly? Aye. 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 Wangaman? No. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Okay, and it carries. Okay, um, Alderman Gisha would like the floor to make a motion. Um, because I, I agree with Eric, that's why I changed my mind. One is long term, one is short term. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to refer these documents and under six. I think we have all the cover we need on the agenda. These documents to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee for further discussion and possibly bringing something back to the council. By documents, we're speaking of this TO diagram. Okay, and that's Correct. all we have. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to refer this back to the council. Well, the, the, no, the, the Strategic Fiscal Committee. It's hard to say that. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, for their uh, development and um, study. Any discussion on that? Wonderful. Let's take a roll call on this. Uh, okay, and I would be the to refer this to the strategic fiscal plan. Bolt. Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Pot? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Hyunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Reinflesch? Aye. Sir? Aye. Vanderly? Aye. Who? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Thank you. Born, I'm sorry. Aye. <laughs> I, I was trying to do it like Sue Richards does it. I just, I just forget. That. Don't quit your hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. okay. Um, Fifteen eyes. Okay, I think we've uh, kind of literally moved some mountains maybe tonight. I don't know. In terms of the future of the city, I'm not sure. We're, we're moving in some new directions. So I think there's nothing else. So we will adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you very much for all your time.